This could potentially be the most important and meaningful thing I talk about this year. Imposter syndrome. Yuck. Hey everyone, I'm Dylan Winspear and the host of the Design Today podcast. I appreciate you giving this episode a listen. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for coming back and catching this episode. Before I get into our topic today, I do have a bit of news for you. This will be my last episode of the year. As many of you know, I've got a wife and three beautiful kids, and this time of year means a lot to them. And while I do love this podcast sincerely, I need to take some time to recenter on my priorities in life. But it's not over. Design Today will be back at the beginning of the new year, not only with more content, but with new offerings to help UX designers continue to refine their skill set. I'm really excited about what's coming next. Additionally, the guest lineup continues to get better and better. I've recorded some fantastic episodes with guests like Nir Ayal, author of the book Hooked and Indistractable, Doug Collins, aka at Doug Collins UX on Twitter, Catherine Wong, chief of product at Domo, one of my personal heroes, uh, and Stephen Miller, aka UX Stephen on Instagram, uh, and so many more. Consider subscribing to be notified when Design Today fires back up. Now, for the final rant of 2019, I've totally switched up topics from what I had intended to get to today. Uh, something that's a bit more pointed and meaningful to me right now. Imposter syndrome. Let me start by telling you a story. Two weeks ago, I attended Adobe Max in LA for the second time. The first time was three years ago, and I remember coming home so inspired by the things I saw and heard and discovered. Desiring another boost in creativity, I was eager to get back to Max this year, and I'll just say this, it didn't disappoint. They had a super lineup of speakers and workshops, including people like M. Night Shyamalan, Billie Eilish, and Dave Grohl. I had so many experiences this year that were just mind-blowingly amazing, and I met so many talented people, but one thing kept nagging at me in the back of my mind that I did not foresee coming. Dylan, these people are so much more talented than you. What are you doing here? You're not in the same category as these creatives. And while I want to say it didn't bother me, I wasn't able to put it away. I couldn't shake it. Since coming home from the conference, I still hear that voice too. As I mentioned, I've got a lot in store for 2020 with respects to design today, but it's been a battle to make progress on it. As part of this process, I've been doing a ton of research, and the more I research, the more I realize there are so many other design-based podcasts out there. Why would anyone listen to this? Or I see the success of some podcasts, and I get down on myself for not having the same level of success, and that spirals into darker thoughts that tell me I might as well just hang it up and let the sun set on this podcast adventure. But then I have moments of clarity, fleeting moments, yet moments nonetheless. It's in those small moments I realize, no, I really do love doing this podcast. I really do love the people I've met along the way, the opportunities and experience it's provided, and the people who've sent messages along the way saying that they're benefiting from this content in one way or another. That stuff means the world to me, and I know why I do it. With that bit of clarity, I've tried to then explore what those other negative thoughts were all about. These thoughts come along with feelings of anxiety, self-doubt, unworthiness, perfectionism, fear of failure. After doing some research, I found that 70% of people in this country have at least a passing acquaintance with the feelings or symptoms that are associated with imposter syndrome. This number really surprised me. It means that I'm not alone in feeling this way. It means that 70% of people at Adobe Max feel that way. How incredible is it that we all walk around carrying on conversations, yet secretly inside we might all be feeling, I hope they don't catch on that I'm a fraud. As I continued my research, I found a consistent theme from all these professionals who've spoken on this topic. All of them stated that one of the best ways to get past imposter syndrome is to talk about imposter syndrome. It's the opposite of the fight club approach. The first rule of imposter syndrome you've got to talk about imposter syndrome. It's in talking about imposter syndrome 
we can realize more often than not, the person you're working next to is feeling the same way you're feeling. This rant was in no way a cry for sympathy. Instead, I'm using it as an opportunity to be vulnerable with you and to let you know that I struggle with imposter syndrome too. And I'm willing to talk about it with you if you need me. One of the things I've always loved about the UX community is how willing people are to help one another. Our community can be a safe place to have these conversations. And if you're struggling with this, that makes two of us in this battle. And I'm sure by talking about this openly, more will come out of the woodwork to tell you they've either been there too or they're here now. Truthfully, I've not come out of the other side of this topic yet. I've not been able to say imposter syndrome is a thing of the past for me. So what I ask of you is to keep this conversation rolling. If this episode hits home for you in any way, share it on social media and get the conversation rolling in your social groups. Tag me. I'd love to chime in. The best way through it is in talking about it together, and that's what we can do. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Design Today. Like, comment, subscribe, and all the other goodies to help spread the word and show your support of the show. Again, we'll be back at the beginning of 2020 with some exciting announcements. Until then, find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Slack, or wherever you can, and I'm happy to help.